Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I am going to be looking at a video, uh, an animal video. This is by creator Good Enough, uh, top 10 animals that love being high. I feel like, I don't know if humans are going to be on this list, if that's going to count. Uh, dolphins are almost certainly going to be on this list. Um, but they're the only animal that I know of that likes to, you know, they kill pufferfish or stuff, something to get high off of them. Um, but I, that's the only one I know of that I can think of off the top of my head. Pigs, maybe? I know that pigs, like, will eat, like, fermented stuff and get drunk. Hmm. I, so I don't know, uh, who, what the animals are that like getting high. I'm excited to find out. I want to do, a, give a special shout out to our channel members, uh, Pterodactyl, Stephen Huff, Joe Favreau. Thank you so, so much. Um, we really could not be here without you. Um, and you know, it, like, just that, so you know, for everybody else, we do have memberships, uh, for the red line riders, you get the, um, you can get just a shout out and occasionally potentially We'll do some members only polls. Um, you know, as, as we gain more members, more perks will emerge. Um, the Chicago dogs, you can get, uh, extra videos, early content with no ads. Um, and then of course you also get your shout outs as well, but you know, just some, we have some perks. We have some perks. This is top 10 animals that love being high. Let's get the easy ones out of the way and slowly work our way up to the worst offenders on the list. Number okay. 10, cats. This one oh. is more of a misconception oh, right. rather you know than what? an animal. Okay, that's fair. Catnip. That's fair enough. But he, now he's saying it's a misconception. So it's Actually fair. abusing a substance. If you have a cat, then you've more than likely tried giving them Nepotecataria or better known as catnip. Now, this one is not really a drug like the others on the list and is actually an herb that is very closely related to mint. But it does contain a compound called nepotalactone, which can have a mild and temporary stimulant effect on some cats. And that's the thing with catnip. Some cats are affected by it and will go absolutely crazy for it, while others just remind you that you cannot buy their love and they still don't want anything to do with you. Now, Aww. catnip has many different effects on cats, but here are the most common ones. They will roll around in it. They will become very hyper after they ingest it, or they might just become very relaxed. Number nine, dolphins. This is another common one that most people have probably heard of. Everybody yes. loves telling the story when they themselves are under the influence. So let's just get this one out of the way. Yes, it's true. Dolphins are the real menaces of the ocean and are despicable losers who love to get high. They do this by first surrounding a puffer fish and proceeding to take turns lightly biting on it. Not only will they nudge and bite the puffer fish, the pot of dolphins will take it a step further by launching him out of the water and playing catch with him, right. making sure that that puffer fish is completely traumatized for the rest of its existence. And as you can imagine, this causes the puffer to go into a full panic, triggering its defense mechanism, releasing a toxic poison called tetrodotoxin, which is one of the most deadly poisons in the world. To put it into perspective, one puffer fish has enough poison to kill 30 adult humans. I literally just learned about this. Or about 15 average size Americans. <laughs> now, even though. Rude. <laughs> Rude. True. It's deadly. Dolphins have learned exactly how much of the poison they can tolerate without dying. They've actually been filmed passing the puffer around for 20 to 30 minutes at a time before letting it swim off. The effects that the poison has on the dolphins is pretty interesting. They seem to go into a euphoric state where they become very calm and relaxed, even being mesmerized and completely fascinated by their own reflection on the surface of the water. Number 8. Birds. Okay, now we're getting to the ones that most people have not heard of, but have probably seen firsthand. Have you ever come across a dead bird that crashed into a window or building? And you sit there wondering, how is it possible that it had unlimited airspace to fly around in, and yet still managed to crash? Well, the truth is that it was probably flying under the influence. This usually happens after the first frost, which causes fruits and berries to ferment, producing ethanol, a type of alcohol. Okay. And of course, birds... Okay, so not necessarily high, just, okay, so I think this video is more, not necessarily being high, but under the influence. Birds know this. They will then proceed to eat as much of the fermented fruit or berries as they can to get completely hammered. 
and in certain parts of the world, bird alcoholism is on the rise. Just look at Yukon, Canada, where they have built a sanctuary for birds that have had too much of the booze, which is basically a drunk tank for birds. Here, they are placed in tiny cages until they sober up, but as soon as they do, they are released back into the wild where they can continue boozing. So next okay. time you see a bird that isn't flying straight, just remember, he's probably a degenerate good-for-nothing alcoholic. Number 7. Honeybees this one is similar to number eight, as most people probably won't know this one, but once you hear about it, you'll realize that you've come across it at one point in your life. Now, this one is a little more violent and doesn't have the ending that you would find at a massage parlor. Mm. Have you ever come across a honeybee that's crawling on the floor and doesn't seem to want to fly? As a kid, I used to think that this was because the bee had recently stung someone and is now dying a horrible and painfully slow death. Oh, yikes. But now as an adult, I am way more informed. Now, when I come across- That was a terrifying little image. I just thought they were tired or something. It's a crawling bee. I now know that it's either completely blocked out drunk or dying a horrible and painfully slow death. You see, when the temperatures rise, the nectar in plants can become fermented and you guessed it, it becomes alcohol. So when bees go to collect pollen from the plant and drink some of that sweet fermented nectar, they get completely drunk. And this is when you might find- You can get completely drunk if you buy one of our lovely shot glasses in the store in the link description below. Find a bee that has lost all control of its sense of direction and motor skills. Now the sad part is, if by some miracle the bee manages to return back to its hive, it will have to go through the guard bees. Think of these guys as the bouncers of the hive, but a lot more violent, aggressive, and heartless. If a drunk bee shows up to the hive, one of two things will happen. He will either get a lifetime ban from the hive, or get his arms torn off, wings torn off, legs torn off, antennas torn off, and eyes torn out, and die a horrible and painfully slow death. But don't worry, it's all done for the sake of the colony, since fermented nectar in the hive can cause the entire colony to collapse. Oh, Number six, fruit flies. Researchers at a San Francisco university- A lot of these make sense, I just never would have considered it. Like, fruit flies, it does, it tracks, if, especially with all of these fermentations going on, like- it makes sense. I just never would have thought about it. University have found that male fruit flies don't handle rejection very well. The research shows that when male fruit flies are rejected by a potential partner, they actually seek out alcohol. Oh, just Who would have thought up. that I had so much in common with the fly? Number f All right, so is that why <laughs> there's often in the summertime fruit flies hanging around at the, like, trying to get at the, the bar? <laughs> like, there's a reason, like, we have to clean the spouts and everything that the, um, that, that the, liquor comes out at we clean them out every day but it's just like there's sometimes you know fruit flies just show up and then they hang out and they don't go away i'm like I'm, are they all rejected male fruit flies? five vervet monkeys now this is the last animal on the list that belongs in an aa meeting and the reason why they rank so high on the list is simply because they're not just alcoholics but they are outright disgusting criminals when these monkeys can't get their fix from fermented fruit they turn to a life of crime <laughs> stealing alcohol from tourists and they're damn good at it. They patiently oh wait in the shadows for the perfect opportunity. And the moment a person sets their drink down will be their first mistake. Because as soon as you look away, it's already too late. The monkey will have its greasy little hands on it and already slurping the alcohol down. They do have some of the coolest pictures though. So I'll give them that. These monkeys are <laughs> such a problem that the Caribbean island. I feel like women get their drinks probably stolen less because we are taught never to put your drink down like <laughs> you're in a public space you want to keep a hold of that thing you don't want to look away from it of sint merton has recently passed a bill that would allow them to exterminate all the monkeys apparently oh, no. all 450 of them you know as soon as i said that last part i realized that i probably could have left that part out number yeah, no, four the black them. lemur now we're moving on from puffer fish and now stop destroying whole species dude like come on humanity wake up like just don't put down your alcohol. Alcohol and moving on to the hard stuff. Okay, to be fair, puffer fish is pretty insane, but a lot of people already knew that one, so I put that at the top of the list. But let's move on, starting off with the black lemur. Who would have thought that these cute animals from the island of Madagascar would turn out to be such despicable and heinous creatures? <laughs> the black lemur has a diet primarily made up of fruit, 
but on occasion, it does love to consume a toxic combination of chemicals, which include oh. cyanide. It's able to consume this okay. when it finds a millipede and begins to lightly chew on it. This causes the millipede to curl up and release a toxic chemical that is meant to deter animals from eating it. But to the lemur, this chemical just signals to the boys that they're in for a wild night. I love that, like, it's not just humans that are just evolved to ignore the signals that various plants and animals give us. Like, like peppers, you know, like we're not like they're spicy in order to prevent things from eating them. But humans are just like, ooh, spicy, nom, nom, nom. And like things like, you know, coffee and, and like anything alcoholic too. It's just it's all poisons and we're all, and like a lot of these things and not not out necessarily alcohol specifically, but there's a lot of like natural things that were specifically evolved to dissuade you from eating them. And we are just like, yes, extra spice. Let's have fun with this or you know, I love that animals do it too. It's not just us. I mean, it just, it links us more to the rest of the animal kingdom. It's like, ah, yes, my brothers. Unlike the others on the list, there is actually one health benefit for getting their hands on this dangerous toxin. And after just one hit from the millipede, the lemur begins to drool uncontrollably. They then begin to rub the saliva and toxins all over their body to protect themselves from mosquitoes, which carry wow. malaria. But don't think it's all business. The lemurs continue to take hits from Ooh. the centipede, consuming more and more of the toxin until they are completely obliterated. It reaches the point that they are so high that the only option left is to sleep it off. Number three, yes. reindeer. Remember that little red mushroom from the Mario games? As I'm sure you've heard, its real name is Amanita muscaria, and it's insanely toxic. Oh. <laughs> yes, his name is Toad. <laughs> not as Amanita Muscaria. Sick and brings on some very intense hallucinations. But this doesn't seem to matter to the reindeer of Siberia, Russia, which actually go to great lengths to seek it out and consume it. Once it's ingested and the effects kick in, they begin to act in a very strange way. They end up running around aimlessly and begin making strange noises. But the reason the reindeer are so high on the list is simply because they are a bad influence on others. <laughs> Apparently humans watch them eat the magic mushrooms and they Sounds made it right. look so fun that we just had to try it for ourselves. Sounds some right. people got incredibly high and began to have some of the most intense and vivid hallucinations while others died. Oh, good. And instead of saying, you know what? We took a nail on this one, boys, and we should probably avoid these mushrooms from here on out. No. Someone no. had the brilliant idea of consuming the urine of the reindeer instead since he believed that the urine would sterilize the toxins but keep the effects of the mushrooms intact. And he was right. Ew, and after no! that, humans and reindeers right? could go on wild hallucinogenic trips together. Some people even believe that this is how the story of Santa Claus was created. This theory is called- I love that. Also, I love that this is now a timely video. Santa Claus has been mentioned and it's almost Christmas time or maybe it is- about Christmas time whenever I put this up. But hey, it's timely now. Called the Magic Mushroom Christmas Theory. I love it. I've number never two, heard that. Jaguars. I, I guess even an apex predator needs a break from killing and ripping other animals apart. They do this by seeking out the Yage vine, which is one of the major ingredients when creating ayahuasca, arguably the strongest hallucination drug on earth. And once the cat consumes it and the effects kick in, they begin to turn into a big, goofy, intoxicated kitten. A clip from BBC caught this all on tape a few years ago, and it's pretty interesting to watch. The native people of the Amazon claim that the jaguars consume this drug since it heightens their senses, improving their ability to hunt. But they're in denial. The cat simply does it to discover things about the universe that he would otherwise not know. Like how Willy Wonka was a serial killer similar to Jigsaw, but instead of doing his experiments on adults, he would do them on children, and nobody ever batted an eye. Well, that's because in the original story, the children all lived. They were horribly mutilated, but they did all live in the original book. Like, I, it's very highly implied that they definitely died in the uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder. But, but they survived in the original series. And some of them even thrived after they were horribly mutilated. Number one, parrots. 
Now this one had to go last due to the severity of the situation. In northern India, these birds are so addicted to opium that the farmers have reported taking massive losses in revenue due to these birds alone. These farmers who have special permission to grow the plant for medicinal companies have tried everything under the sun to stop these birds from eating their plants. And it's not uncommon to see a parrot fly away with an entire opium pod to himself. Apparently, a single parrot will come down and take a bite of the opium milk 30 to 40 times a day. And the sad part is, since opium is a hard drug with very real consequences to health, the moment the parrots become addicted to it, they are as good as dead. Yeah. Because as soon as the farmers harvest the plant, the birds are left with such horrible withdrawals that it ends up costing them their lives. Oof. And parrots falling from trees and electrical lines becomes a common occurrence. But it doesn't stop there. In the following year, once the farmers plant the next batch of opium, the vicious cycle starts all over again, Bummer. like a never-ending nightmare. Alright, well, I enjoyed that. That was interesting. It is more of like a top 10 creatures who like getting intoxicated or like who like getting um, mind-altering substances as opposed to just high because a lot of that was alcohol. Um, but actually, though, that, like, opium parrots, I didn't realize that was a thing, but it did, was a major plot point in the Star Kid Nightmare Time episode, uh, and the one about the, well, anyway, there was, I don't remember what it was called. Perkins. Puffin? Puffin Perkins? Anyway, there were these birds in it that were, she was a, she grew pot and these birds in it would eat the leaves and, you know, it was very frustrating to the, uh, Perky's buds? Anyway, the, the birds would eat the, the drugs, um, to the chagrin of the human characters, um, and then it turned into, like, this weird thing where like there's like magic and stuff that goes on so the birds ended up becoming super intelligent and we're like you know you have to keep uh use you have to keep farming you have to keep working so that we can have our <laughs> we so we can get our so we can get our hit <laughs> like but anyway perky's buds i think i don't remember what the story was called but it was from the star kids nightmare time season two and it had a very similar premise to that except for there was some magic or something involved as well anyway um i learned stuff there i hope you did too thank you so much for watching let me know what i should look at next don't forget to like and subscribe this video as well as show off so some love to good enough it sounds like he's got some really interesting videos that i might be taking more of a look at in later episodes here so thanks again i'll see you in the next video